Hello, Joanne here with Rustic Glitter. If you have not been on one of my lives before, thank you, thank you. Today, I'm gonna show you how to paint buffalo plaid. All right, let me just get set up here. Let me make sure that we are live and everything is working. Yep, we are. All right, so if you're just joining, please say hi so that I at least know this is working. Hi, Jennifer, glad you can make it. This is gonna be fun if you love this buffalo plaid pattern like I do. Um, let's see, give me just a second. We are. All right, so if you're just joining, please say hi. Sorry. Just want to make sure I can see all the comments because I never know if I can see it on my phone but <clears throat> okay so before we get started if you are not in our text group then please join it here so that you get updates when we're having um, tutorials like this or when we release products promotions anything that you want to know about this is the best place to find out. I do send emails, but sometimes those go to junk, so you just never know um, if they got received or not. So this is where I'm trying to move a lot of our communication to, just because it's right on your phone and we're always on our phone. Um, so I know like I have my phone on me all the time and if I need to look something up, I have my phone more than my computer. So. This is where we're trying to go to. I will still send emails and stuff like that. So that will never go away, but um, this is definitely a better place to be to see things. So um, let me turn. All right, so if you are here, please say hi so I know who's joining. Let me know um, where you're watching from. I am in Texas if you're new here. Um, and my business is Rustic Glitter that I started back in 2017, more as a hobby, but um, last year, was it last year? Yeah, last year I took it full, full time when um, the pandemic hit and I had to close my other business due to that. So this is where we're at. Um, I've turned my hobby and my joy of crafting into a full time business and um, I sell craft kits. We have a subscription box that we send out every month and I um, do tutorials on how to paint different things and on tutorials on how to paint some of our craft kits. So, but I know this time of year, the Buffalo plaid is very, very popular. I know for me, I am obsessed with Buffalo plaid. I have it the, the black and white pattern I have out pretty much all year. Like my dog's beds are buffalo plaid. <laughs> I have pillows on the entry bench that are buffalo plaid. Um, yeah, I might have a little bit of a problem with buffalo plaid. But I learned how to paint this um, back in 2017. It was my very, very first tutorial that I've ever posted as a video on YouTube. It was my very first. And I want to say to date, it probably has like 60,000 views or something like that. I just couldn't even believe how much it has been viewed. And it's not even the best video because it was my very first video. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, hey, I learned how to paint this. I bet other people want to learn too. So let me just go ahead and post it. And it's not the best video, <laughs> but it's out there. It's there. Um, so anyway, so I thought... Now, with you know, we have Facebook Live and all these groups and everything. Why not show y'all exactly how to paint it? Because it's really not complicated. But the I think the complicated part is where to place the tape and how do you get the lines to look like that? And 
even yesterday when I was painting the sample, I still sometimes when I'm doing, I'm like, uh oh, did I just mess up? Because this doesn't look right. And then you take off all the tape and you're like, oh my God, this looks so good. So don't panic with it. So have your paper and pen so you can take some notes. If you have questions, you can ask me questions. Um, but like I said, it's once you get it down and sometimes, you know what? I still have to go back and watch my video and make sure that I'm doing it right. If I haven't done it in a while, then I have to go back and watch it just to make sure, okay, did I place the tape here right? Did I do that? So, you know, sometimes we forget, but um, I've been doing a few of these signs for some other classes that I have coming up and I'm just like so ecstatic about it. So I thought, why not teach everyone else how to do it, especially if you are in the crafting business as well and you want to, um, and you do hand painted signs and you wanna, you know, add this to your um, pieces that you offer for the holiday season. So, all right, so we have the number here to join. And like I said, let me know where you're watching from if you are new here. Um, so I can see, I know I've posted about this workshop in a few different places um, to have people join in. So <clears throat> I have my cup of gingerbread vanilla chai. What is everyone drinking this morning? Let me know what, it's the, it's the first day of fall. It is the first day of fall. So I hope you have yourself a little fall drink. Um, all right, so. Let me show you the sample that I did yesterday and you can see what we are going to do today. And I love the way that this turned out. So this is what I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to hold this straight. Is um, the orange with the um, black buffalo plaid on there. So I'm going to show y'all how to do that. I wanted to do another one um, that was for fall since today is the first day of fall. Um, but I didn't get the back of the sign painted, so I'll do that after, unless we have time left, but I need that paint to dry, so I'll probably have to do it after and I'll post a picture, because what I want it to do is do a reversible sign, so for Halloween, and then on the back, it's gonna say, Happy Fall, y'all, so I can show the fall one now, and then in October, I can flip it around where it says Happy Halloween. And then after Halloween, I can flip it back for fall for November. So, all right. So, who is ready to learn how to paint this? And it this turned out so cute. Now, this is on, I'm using a fourth inch um, piece of wood. We cut the rounds here. So, if you do need blanks, craft blanks, the round size um we do sell those and we sell them in different sizes and different thicknesses now if you um are watching this and you also have a business and you need to buy these in bulk then um just send us an email and we can give you um and tell you the details for that but um, otherwise if you're wanting to make signs like this too then we do sell the blank rounds on there and these are cut by our machine and then hand sand it. Now, when our laser comes, which will be hopefully next month, if not the end of this month, I'm super, super excited, then these will, then I'll move these to laser cut, unless it's the 3 4 inch, the really thick one, but that's really, 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 really thick for a sign. So, but otherwise then we'll move a lot of our stuff to being laser cut. So you'll have the, laser edges on there. So I see some new people have joined. Please say hi. So I know who's here. We're just about to start on um, painting this. This is the sample of what we are going to be painting, the orange and the black. And then it's going to say happy Halloween. And I have another one that I'm going to do on the back side of it. And it says happy fall y'all. So that I have a reversible sign, but I'm not gonna be able to do that part live just because I don't have the back side of that ready to go and paint it yet. So, but the technique will be the same. All right, so you have your coffee, you have some water, um, not some water, some paper and a pen, and we are about to get started here, okay? So, put the 
this over here. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, so let me just put it there. All right, so I already have my round painted the orange, so I've already done that. Um, and the back side, I'm gonna do, so I didn't have a chance to get this painted, but I'm gonna do a reversible sign. So on the back, it'll say the happy fall, y'all. This side will say happy Halloween. So um, I painted this and I sanded it down and I used, where is it? I just used a 400 grit sandpaper very lightly. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on it. Um, and you want to make sure that this surface is smooth because when you go to tape it, then it's, you're gonna get um, less of a chance of having those bleed lines on there. Hi, Amanda, thanks for joining. Let me know where you're watching from also if um, you're just popping on. I'd love to know where everyone is at. Um, or I'm in Texas if you just joined. But, um, okay, so I already painted this orange and I did this yesterday so it's already had time to sit. But really, I mean, you could do this whole technique, you know, within an hour. Um, so, like I said, sand it down really smooth, okay? Now on mine, the sample one I did, if you can see, I also distressed it. So. On the um, Buffalo plaid, I don't like those really crisp, crisp lines, but I also love everything distressed, so that's me. But if you want those super crisp lines um, and you're not planning to distress it, then definitely make sure your board is nice and sanded and you have really good tape that is going to adhere to the board. I don't worry too much about that because um, I distress mine. So I don't distress the letters, just the back. So I'm gonna show you that too. All right, so we have our already painted board. Amanda, you're in Massachusetts. Well, thank you for joining. Um, all right, so, and I am using, this is a one and a half inch tape. And this size, you can use whatever size you want. Like if you want it, to do the like two inch, you could. Now, if you're doing a really, really big sign, you could probably get away with the two inch, but on this size, if I do two inch, I'm not gonna have a ton of line. It's gonna be a big pattern. So I like the one and a half inch tape. And I like to use the painter's tape is what you wanna use so that it doesn't peel up your paint. Um, this is what I have on hand. It just says sharp lines, multi-surface. I don't know, probably got it. It's the Scotch brand, Scotch Blue. And probably got it at like Home Depot or Lowe's or something. But um, I'll, I'll link all the items that I'm using in the comments when we're done with this video. So that if you need, if you're not, if you're in an area where you can't get to the stores or if y'all are still on lockdown, I know some areas are, and you need to order stuff online, I'll share the Amazon links. And then, like I said, you can get these rounds on our website too. Um, all right, so I am going to tear off a little piece, and this is what you're gonna use as your spacer, okay? So I'm gonna put that to the side, and I'm just gonna eyeball this. If you wanna be exact and precise, then you can get out your ruler and measure where the center is and all that. Um, I don't try to focus too much on that. So I'm just gonna literally eyeball it, okay? So you're just gonna take some tape and you're gonna go down the center. like that. Then you're going to use your spacer piece and you're going to put that right next to the tape that you just laid down in the middle. Now you're going to get another piece of tape. And you're gonna lay it 
on the other side. Can you all see? I want to make sure everyone can see. And then you're going to lay it on the other side of that tape. Like so. Then you're going to lift this off and then you're going to put it on this side. grab another piece of tape. Sorry if y'all can hear all that construction in the background. They are doing some utility work on my side yard. So they have ripped my side yard completely up. All right, so this is where we're at so far. And then you're going to repeat the process on the other side. So let me know, do you keep buffalo plaid decor out all year or do you just put it out during the holiday, this holiday season? Because mine is out all year, unless it's specifically holiday decor stuff. All right, and then just put this aside because you're gonna use it again. to my paper. All right, so this is where you're at and it's evenly spaced one and a half inches because I've used my little spacer. Now you just want to make sure all of this is pushed down really, really well so the paint does not get underneath. Now the other trick that you can do, but you can only do this on this first step is, and I teach this when we're stenciling over a paint color, is that along these lines, you can do a little bit of your base color and that kind of seals the edges so that the paint doesn't go underneath. However, when you go to the next step, you won't be able to do that because you'll already have one coat. So I don't do it just because I can't continue throughout each step. But if you're just starting out and you want to make sure that at least your first layer doesn't bleed under the tape, you can very lightly paint some of your base color. In my case, it would be the orange, but like I said, you can only do that on the first step and you'll see as we go. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that these are all pushed down. And again, remember the key is that you want your wood to be nice and smooth so that the tape will lay flat. All right, put my tape aside and I'm just gonna use a little paper plate and I'm using sponge brushes. So you're going to actually use your base color. So I'm using the orange, the same color that I have painted here. And you want to mix a good amount because you're going to, you want your color to be the same. It doesn't take a lot of paint, but um, depending on how you want your coverage to be, but you're gonna have to do it this way and then you're gonna have to do it that way. And so if you mix a little bit and then you have to go back and mix again, your color might be off just a little bit, which is okay. I mean, um, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, just remember that like Buffalo plaid does not, it doesn't have to be all the colors don't have to be exact because there's so many variations and you can do, um, really you could do like two col three colors. You get really creative with this. Okay. So now I have my black and I'm just going to mix in a little bit of black to darken my orange. Now I will say the orange with the black, at first when I did it, I was like, oh, this is kind of green. Like on my paper, it looked a little green. 
But once it all came together, it was fine. I was a little nervous at first because I wasn't sure. So if you're not sure how the colors are gonna look, then mix a little bit before you start your project, mix a little bit of the paint with the black to see wh what that color is gonna look like. But after I finished it, I absolutely love the way that this looked. And to me now it's looking a little bit more gray next to the black. So sometimes as you're going, you're, the project might seem a little scary, but when it's all done and you peel off all the tape, which is the best part, and you see your whole design, it's like a wow. For me, it's a wow moment every single time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. All right, so I have, okay, yesterday I had a lot of mishaps, so I'm gonna try to avoid that today. All right, so I have my paint in here, and I am going to mix in a little bit of black. And the point is, is that you want the, um, after you paint your base, then your next set of lines, you're just darkening that base color up just a little bit each time, okay? Um, so I'm gonna mix it, let me show you. Because if you do use the same color, right, you're not gonna see it. So it has to be dark enough to where it's gonna make a difference. And I guess you probably could do, if you want it to do black and white and make it more of a gray on top of this, you could do that too. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more black because I don't feel that it's enough. But like I said, just start with a little bit of black and then work your way into the color that you like. And if you have any questions at any time, please comment and I will check them as I'm doing the tutorial. And if not, then I'll get to them at the end. So don't be afraid to ask me any questions. I'm happy, happy to answer them. Okay, so I have this color and I'm gonna paint it on and see, yep, okay. So then you're just going to go ahead and paint your lines. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and paint. And I did two coats. You can do two, three, depends on how thick you want this. Now remember, this coat on top of, everything that's going on top of the base, it should have some variation. As you can see here, you have your base color, the base color, this is the line that like I'm doing right now, this is that color, and then we have the black. So in, if you want all your lines to be solid, 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 you're not gonna distress it, then you can do a few coats to get that way. Um, again, I didn't worry about it because as you can see, let's see if you can see that, how it's distressed, like right here, some of it kind of comes through. That's the look that I was going for. And so I did two coats across each section. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a second. It dries really fast. Um, let's see. Yes, Jennifer, the colors, that, that would probably be the trickiest part is just knowing when you match your colors um, how they're gonna come together. So if you have like a piece of scrap wood and you wanna try it or you wanna mix your paints to the side first, just a little bit to test your colors out, especially if you're doing something a little different than the black and white um, or like, you know, a color like this, then it's always a good idea to go ahead and um, test test those out. So, all right, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a second coat, just cause it's a little too see-through for what I wanna do. And this is the part yesterday where I was like, ooh, I don't know about this color. But when it dried, everything worked out really good for me.
Just the key is, is that you're, you're going darker and darker. So when we're done with these lines, we're gonna do them the opposite way, and then we're gonna follow with black so that you have that level. So you have your base color, and then you're going just a little bit darker of that base color, and then you're going to the black if you're having black in your design. Just gonna fan it here, let it dry. And when you take this tape off, just put it to the side because you're gonna reuse it. This is really cute too if you have like a small, um, like a little rant, like a small circle, and you get the really, really thin tape um, then that looks really good too and you can do that like on little ornaments and stuff like that so I just this pattern is I love it all right I think I'm gonna do really quick just go over it one more time just because it's drying a little too see-through even though I'm gonna distress it I just want to have that on there. So like I said, once the coat dries, make sure it's nice and smooth. So I like to go back and just run my brush through it so I don't have any brush strokes. All right. I'm so over this construction outside, it is driving me crazy. Hi Amanda, thanks for joining. Let me know where you're watching from. All right, so I'm just drying this a little bit so that we can go to the next step. So yeah, if you have any questions, then let me know. Let me know also, have you ever done buffalo plaid or have you just been too nervous to attempt it? Let me know that also. All right, so now I'm going, it's still a little wet, but I am gonna go ahead and take off my tape. And so when you take it off, just go slowly because on top of the tape, the paint is wet. All right, and then I'm just gonna put it to the side of my table so that I can use it again. I'm telling you, taking tape off is like so exciting. <laughs> it's, like, it's like opening a present when I'm stenciling or anything, when I go to remove it and tape, stencil, whatever, like I get so excited. Unless it gets messed up, then you know, no one's excited about that. You always want to make sure your hands are clean so that if you're having to hold the board down when you're taking the tape off so it doesn't pull up, you don't want to get paint everywhere. Okay, so this is where we're at. Remember, this is what we're going for, and this is where we're at, okay? So any questions um, at this step? Does anyone have any questions? Let me know while I'm waiting for this to dry. Um, the other thing is, is I am using a flat or a matte paint. So I'm using 
The orange is an acrylic flat paint, no, um, matte, sorry. It's a matte, same thing really. It's a matte and um, I'm also using some chalk paint. I, I mix them up. I mostly prefer the chalk paint, but I didn't have an orange in my chalk paint. So I'm just mixing it. Okay, so I think it's dry. So that's where we're at. Um, so yeah, so like I said yesterday, and the cut the the lighting in here. I got my lighting fixed from yesterday. Yesterday was a little dark, but it's so much more vibrant the orange than on the screen. To me, it looks a little dull, but in person, this is really really a pretty orange. So I don't know how it comes across on your screen. Everyone's screen is different, but um, there's a little spot that is needing to be dry. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit with my little dryer real quick. Okay, so we have this. Now we have to do the tape again, but this time we're going to turn it. So now we have our lines like this and we're gonna do the tape down. So the opposite direction, the same exact way, okay? but I'm gonna use new tape for this step. And again, I'm just going to eyeball it. If you want to use a ruler, you can definitely do that, mark your center, but I am just going to eyeball it. Okay. Again, I'm gonna push that down and then we're gonna use our spacer piece and we're gonna repeat the process the same exact way that we did the first time. All right, so this is what we have now. So you have your lines this way and you have, you're gonna do new lines this way. Now this is where it can start to get a little confusing because as you're doing it, and like I said, I process this every single time I'm doing this. I'm like, okay, am I correct? Because it does start to look a little like you screwed up. I mean, I'll be honest. It starts to be like, oh, I did something wrong. This isn't gonna come out right, but it will. And it'll be amazing. So, because you're gonna paint over these lines. So, it might be confusing because you're like, wait, I just painted these and I'm gonna paint over it. Yes, you are going to paint over all of these lines that you just did. So same color, um, that's why I said mix a good batch of it so that you have the same exact color. You can, um, I've done where I've gone actually a little bit lighter in this step. So I've gone like the base color, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter from that one. So you can go darker, darker, darker. So you, you can customize that how you want, um, but I am going to use the same exact color as I did the first round. And I'm gonna do it the same exact way, which was three, three coats.
So as I, so like I said the very first time, if on your first part, um, section that you could have painted the orange along the edge of the tape to prevent those bleed lines on the first set of stripes. But as you see, you can't do that this time because you already have your stripes. So I don't, honestly, I don't even mess with that since I can't do that all the way through. All right, I'm gonna let this dry a second and I'm gonna do a second coat. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I can help you. And this video will always be available on our Facebook page so you can always go back and reference it. Um, and I might add this one to YouTube as an updated one from my very first one. This is one of my favorite things to paint just because it's such a wow factor. It's just, it's not, you know, solid color, simple design. It, and so many people wonder like, how do you paint buffalo plaid? So when you are selling signs or um, making something for your house and people are like, you painted that? So it's a, it's a really good wow factor. All right, one more coat and we'll be done with this step. Now, this tape is, you're going to leave it on. You do not want to remove that tape. So if you're taking notes, then um, we are using, I'm using the one and a half inch painter's tape. So painter's tape is key that you want to use so that it doesn't peel up your paint. It can be any brand of painter's tape. Um, and when you lay down your first set of strips, you want to have a spacer so you get even spacing. And you're just using the same tape, same width, so you get even. And the first set of strips you will remove so write that down in your notes that the first set of strips you will remove but then you're going to set it aside because you're going to use those again then you're going to lay the second set of stripes the opposite way those you will not remove those are going to stay on the board until you are completely done so these right here staying on here until we are done done Okay, all right, let me paint one more coat. And then after this, you're done with this color. So we won't use this color again. Just straightening up my lines. All right, so I'm done with this. Don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna put my brush, because you wanna then use a clean, brand new brush that has no paint on it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my water. All right, so this is what we have. So you can still see those stripes underneath, which is okay, because if you're painting over it, it's only gonna darken those up, and then you have a little bit of the lighter ones. So if I wanted to do another coat, I could, but I'm not because I like the way this looks, especially since I am going to distress it. So it's still a little wet. But you can see the key is, is that 
you want to be able to see where your lighter lines are. So where you had the tape the very, very first time. Um, if you're using a darker color, then that might get a little hard, but you can still kind of see when you're using a darker color where those lines are. So just be cautious when you're, depending on the colors that you're using, that um, you're able to still see all the way through. All right, so let's let this dry because now for this step, you do need it to be dry because we have to put the tape, I don't know if it just glitched out. Um, I was saying that for this step, you do need it to be completely dry because we're gonna take that first set of tape that we used and put it back exactly where it was. <clears throat> I think this is also one of the parts that gets really confusing on Okay, now what? Now where do I put the tape? And some people wanna just peel it off at this point and think they're done, but you're not, almost. Almost, almost. And um, this might be a little bit longer than an hour. I mean, we'll be done with this, but if you wanna see me stencil it and finish it out, it'll probably be a little bit over an hour. All right, let me let that finish drying. I'm gonna plug in my laptop here really quick. Okay. Is everyone following along so far? No questions? And I'm just gonna use a hair dryer really quick. So if you're if you are crafting at home and you need things to speed up, you can use a hair dryer. I have another little dryer that I use, um, but I have that downstairs because I use that for like shrink wrap and stuff. But it's a little bit hotter. But the key is is that I've learned my lesson that sometimes I'm in a hurry and I put it really close because I think the closer it is, it's gonna dry faster. Well, what that actually does is that it can make your paint crack and you get this crack look, which is, sometimes is kind of a cool look, um, but I learned my lesson yesterday because I've been using hair dryer for a very long time and yesterday when I was painting my sign, I was, it was late and I was rushing and I thought, oh, I'll just hold the paint a little bit closer. And when I was done, I was like, what happened? The white, it was it was more of the white. And you can't, you can kind of see it, but I, I touched it up by hand. I went through and repainted it with a brush, but um, never had that happen. So I asked in some of my groups and yeah, I had the heat a little too close. So don't hold it, don't get in a hurry and hold it really close. You just need that heat you know, to hit it. All right. So now it's dry. All right, so now we are going to take the tape from the first set and we are going to put it back and you're gonna put it back where the lines are lighter. So if you can see here, um, it's gonna be every other where the, the lighter of the lines are. So you can see that. So, this, so when we laid the tape down the first time, we paint it, um, let me see. I'm trying to get it where it, you can see it a little bit. I think, it, I think you could see it best when I had it flat. Let me know if everyone can see okay. But, um, so like I had the tape on the edges, so I know that. And I'm gonna just place that tape exactly where it was the first time. And I'm just gonna go, now here you don't need the spacers because you already have your lines because um, you're just covering up exactly where it was the first time.
So this is what it looks like. And I and with the paint on the tape, this this is the other part that can be really confusing because you're trying to the for me. I'm trying to figure it out in my head, like, okay, if you go this way and this way and this way, and you end up with this pattern. That's where I was getting so confused when I first started doing this to make sure that the pattern was correct. And it's so much easier to explain verbally and to show it versus putting it on paper. So like I know our, my last um, month, well, this September, our subscription box, I showed how to do a buffalo plaid pattern and I was trying to write it out and it was it's just easier for me to like show it than to write it <laughs> okay so for this step you're just gonna do black straight up black we're not gonna mix it with anything And this part, you can make it um, as heavy of a coat as you want, or if you want it to be a little bit see-through, I'll probably do three coats as well. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I just have the black, and I'm just gonna start painting in my squares. Now, I am gonna make sure that my paint strokes are going all the same way just because I don't want to have like mishmash lines here and there. So I am going to make sure that I stay the same. And I'm just painting inside each little square. Once you get the hang of this, it, it, it is actually pretty easy. I think it's just wrapping your head around the process because of the lines being this color and that color and that color. I think that's the trickiest part. For me anyways, it was. Because I tried to overanalyze it instead of just, okay, let me just put the tape down. Let me start this way. I tried to overthink the process and it, it, I only complicated it myself. So I'm just filling in where the squares are with the black. And then I'm gonna let it dry a second, and then I'm gonna go and do another coat. And here, like the orange is kind of showing through, so if you like that look and you wanna leave it, you can definitely do that. Um, I want mine to be just a little bit thicker since I am going to distress it a little bit. I don't want it to be too thin of a coat of black. I want it to pop.
right, let me see what that looks like and I'll see if I need to do a third. So if y'all do paint something that is buffalo plaid, then I'd love to see it. I'd love to see your finished piece. Again, if you have a dryer, you can always speed it up just a little bit. back I'm not even probably gonna put more paint on just to fill in some of the spots that are still see-through I don't mind if a little bit is showing through but there's a little bit more than I want like I said I'm not even adding more paint to my brush because I don't want to glob it on I just want to fill in those spots And I'm done with that. Let that dry. another part of where I was working. Okay, that looks good to me. All right, so this is the best part that we've all been waiting for is the reveal. So this is literally like the most exciting thing. So you have your piece here, you have all of your tape, and at this point, you're wondering, for me, I'm always wondering, did this come out right? Is it gonna look right? Because I'm not sure. That's how I think, that's how I process. Okay, and when all the tape comes off, it's a wow factor. So here we go. So I'm just gonna pull off the top layers first. You no longer need your tape, so you can throw, you can bundle it up however you wanna take it off, but we're not gonna, we don't need tape anymore, okay? Because at this point, we're done. And I think, like, when you have the tapes this way and this way, it still is, still unseen to wonder like is this still going to turn out right trust me it will and it'll be beautiful and you'll be so proud of yourself that you did it all right so we got one row one way done and this is what we're with now we're going to take off the final and last tape and you're going to see the process Again, make sure your hands are clean so you can hold your board down. A few little bleeding over here, but for me, because I'm going to sand it, it's not a big deal. I don't stress over that kind of stuff. Ta-da! Amazing! This is so exciting! Every single time. I get excited over the crazy stuff. <laughs> Who else gets excited when they've painted something and it turns out the way that it it should or better than expected? Especially when you can't see the process as you're going until you reveal it. Okay, so 
So here we are. I have a few little bleeding over here and so, um, and right here and a little bit here. So what I like to do, if that bothers you, then save this, don't throw it away yet, and you can come back and with a little brush, you can slightly touch it up. Make sure it's over the black, it's not gonna, it might take a few coats, but um, like I said, I'm not gonna stress too much about it just because once I sand it, it's not even gonna be very noticeable. And then because we use the orange as our base, then I can also just touch up with a little bit of the orange where some of that got to. And I had this happen on the very first sign too, that the sample that I showed you. But you don't I don't need I can't even see where it was now because I've distressed it. Alright. So there's that. Let me dry those spots and then I'm gonna sand it and then you'll see how it um distresses. <laughs> So you can definitely leave it like this where you have the really, really crisp lines and stencil over it or if you're doing a, um, some cut out letters or cut out shape, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, I would let it dry just a little bit so that if you're gluing something on that you can make sure that the glue adheres and not over any wet paint. Um, but you can definitely leave it like this, but um, I like things to be distressed. So I am going to use, I'm going to start with this 320 and I'm going to sand around the edges. Now, if you have an electric sander and you want a little bit heavier of a distressing, then um, you can definitely hit it with the electric sander. All right, and then decide which way you wanna go and stay consistent with that way. the opposite way. Now I like to use my little handy um, sander here. This is one of my favorite tools for um, distressing because you can like put your little finger there and push, you can do it in the back. Um, so I really like to use this and I can link this um, below when I link all the other things that, you know, the tape and the stuff that I'm using here. So with this, I'm gonna do the same thing, keep it one way and then I can flip it and go the other way, but you don't wanna go like all which way because then you're gonna get some weird lines. And this is just going to take off some more of the paint. So it just depends on what level of distressing that you want to do.
Definitely an arm workout. <laughs> And sometimes when you're distressing it like this, any of those little bleed marks that you might have gotten, because it's a thin piece of uh, coat of paint, a lot of times it just sands off. So if you can see how it's distressed a little bit. And then I'm just gonna flip it and do it again, but not as heavy. And then before you move on to your next step, you want to make sure that you have a clean surface because you're gonna have all that sanding. So I'm just going to fold it over. And then you want to get, um, if you've distressed, you, you can skip this step if you're not distressing. Um, I have this little mister, and I'm just going to lightly mist my towel. It does not need to be soaking wet, like just barely mist it. And I'm just going to wipe my board down, and that's just going to clean off any of the um, from debris from sanding. And then you can really see how your piece looks. So I see on here, there's a little spot that did bleed over and I'm just gonna see if I can sand it off and I'm just gonna go real lightly. There you go. All right, so this is where we are at. So I hope this tutorial was really helpful. Hi, Tam Tam, thanks for joining. I'm gonna stencil it, so if y'all wanna hang around and see how I stencil over it, then please stay. Um, but that was your tutorial for the Buffalo Plaid. If you have any questions at all, please comment below and I'm happy to answer them. That's what I'm here for, a tutorial teaching you how to do this. Now, to stencil it, um, you can either keep your lines straight or you can turn it on the angle so that the pattern in the background is um, on the angle. So that's what I did with this one. You can see that um, I, I angled it. Instead of keeping it straight this way, I stencil it on the pattern on the angle, which I like the way that that looks, but that's completely up to you. So this one, maybe I'll do straight and then we can see how that looks. All right. So I have, so this stencil says happy Halloween. So I'm going to do the same and then I'm going to make mine reversible. So on the back side, it'll say happy fall y'all on the back. So I can display them all the way through um, Thanksgiving then you'll have a double sign that you can use so all right so to stencil when you're stenciling so if you're new to stenciling too then stay around so you can kind of see my tips and tricks um, you want to have a like a hard plastic card or if you have a squeegee that you use and you just want to push your transfer tape, which is the top part of your stencil down, and that's helping your stencil adhere to the transfer tape. 
And then I like to flip it over and do the same thing. Okay. Now I'm gonna trim mine up just a little bit to make it easier to lay this down on the round stencil so I can see my edges. And like I said, we do um, have the wood rounds on our website for sale, as long as as well as some other little mini craft kits. We just released our Halloween craft kit yesterday. Um, that is super, super, super cute. So if you're needing some more Halloween decor, check it out. Um, Okay, and then a little trick here is that I'm going to peel, before I peel the back off, I'm going to peel some of this transfer tape up on each side. And that's just going to help me make sure that I'm even all the way around when I go to lay this down. I always like to see some of my stencil when I'm laying it down to make sure that it's lining up the way it should. All right, so now we're going to peel the back of the stencil off. And you wanna do so very carefully when you're dealing with stencils. Um, and you just wanna roll it back. Sometimes you gotta kind of roll and push if these pieces kind of come up. All right. So, I'm gonna do this one on the angle too, just because I prefer that way. All right, so now I can kind of hold it from these little pieces, and I'm not gonna push it down yet because I wanna be able to adjust it if I need to, because my stencil is just slightly smaller than my circle. Okay. And then you're just gonna push it down. And same thing, grab your little card. <clears throat> You want to make sure it's laying nice and flat on your piece of wood. Now the other thing is this buffalo plaid is you can paint this on a canvas. So I did a really pretty um, Christmas sign. It says Merry and Bright and I did the red and the black and on the um, canvas. And then the Merry and Bright, I use a gold paint. It's so pretty. And I put it out every single year. So you can use this, do this pattern on a lot of things. with our stencil and I'm just gonna make sure that it's really really attached to my piece of wood really good because here you're not able to do you know that first color um, 
down first over the stencil because we have so many colors underneath. So can't do that. So when you're stenciling this, you want to go slow and make sure you do very light coats. And I'm going to use a sponge and I'm going to use my white paint. And I'm just gonna pour it on my paper here because I'm gonna end up throwing this paper away. Okay, so I'm just gonna dip my sponge. Now I know y'all can't see that right there. So I'm just gonna dip my sponge in the paint but I don't need this much paint. So I'm gonna to have to dab a little bit of it off. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start dabbing. Now this part can take a little while depending on the coverage that you want, but um, you have to go in thin layers, otherwise it's going to glob underneath and all that work that you did on top of your Buffalo plaid is going to be ruined. And that's something that you're not gonna be able to touch up because You've mixed all those colors. So it's just best to work slow and get a really nice result. So all you're gonna do is dab very thin coats of paint. That's all I'm doing. And you're just gonna do this all the way until you're finished. So I'm gonna stay on just a few more minutes. If anyone has any questions, you can ask them um, in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer those for you. If you're watching this on the replay, please comment replay and you can also ask your questions and I'll get the notification and I will be happy to answer them for you. But I'm not gonna stencil this whole thing live because I don't think anyone really wants to watch me dab paint. Maybe you do, but I don't know. So I'm gonna just do one coat and then probably sign off unless some people start asking questions. So I'll stay on just for a little bit to answer any of the questions if you have any. And a lot of times I'll do with the sponge like this, like with white, it sometimes takes three to four coats of paint. And so sometimes I'll lightly um, dab it. And then once that has started to dry, sometimes I'll use a, a foam brush like this, also with very little bit of paint and I'll, um, finish with the last coat. Again, very, very little bit of paint. Oh, let me read the comments here. Oh, nice, Jennifer. We'll post it in the comments so that we can see. <clears throat> I did um, the purple, 
I did a purple and black buffalo plaid on the little witch hat that's in the Halloween craft kit. I did that on mine. It turned out really, really cute also. So as I'm saying, you can use any color that you want. It does not have to be the traditional black and white. I am gonna do the black and white probably on the back side for the fall one and then do my lettering with some of the fall colors. I typically use like the makeup sponges for this and I'm out of them and so these sponges are so tiny. <clears throat> Hi Lauren, thanks for joining if you're still here watching. But yeah, I would love to see all of y'all's buffalo plaid um, projects, so you can definitely post them in the comments or tag us. Actually, if you post it on your social, then tag us that, um, that you know you learned from this tutorial or share this tutorial with your friends so that they can see it also. All right, so there's the first coat, and I am going to sign off so I can finish this. Like I said, no one probably wants to sit here and watch me dab paint for um, another 30 minutes. <laughs> so like I said, this part can take a little bit long. The Doing the buffalo plaid part is probably the, you know, doesn't really take that long because the paint dries really fast, and you're just removing the tape and laying it back down. So that process you can get done, once you get the hang of it, you can get that process done really, really fast. Um, it's the stenciling part that can get a little tricky. So unless of course you're adding some 3D stuff on top of it and you're just gonna glue that on, then that's really, that's gonna be easy peasy. But that is it. So I'm gonna finish, this is where I'm at, and I'm gonna finish stenciling it and then on the back, I'm going to do my um, happy fall, y'all, one. And I will post some pictures on our social. So make sure you follow all of our social accounts. I would appreciate it um, here on, on Facebook, which is Rustic Glitter. Instagram, it's Rustic Glitter TX. And um, TikTok, it's just Rustic Glitter. And there's a video on there that has been really popular. It's with my husband. Um, but we have some funny little TikToks on there that we do. And then I on there, I do also show some quick, quick, quick little tutorials because, you know, don't have a lot of time on those videos. But um, I am trying to reach a 1,000 followers on TikTok so I can go live on there also and do some tutorials. So if you are on there, give me a like. Um, but also... If you just joined or you're coming in late, remember to text to our text club so you can get in so you can see whenever we do more tutorials and stuff like that. So um, the next tutorial that I'm thinking of doing, and so let me see what the interest is. Um, if so, then I'll tell you what to comment below and then um, I can let you know when I do that. So it's not wood related, but 
this time of year it's something else that is very popular I actually used to sell these years 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 ago um, and I've sold a lot of these wholesale as well but are you interested in a bow tutorial on how to make bows for your signs um, for gift packages that you can use for your tree um, your door hangers stuff like that so um, I am considering showing y'all tutorials because there's some easy ways to make bows and I know sometimes they can be really really intimidating but I'm gonna do if there's an interest then just comment below that just says bow tutorial and um, and that way I can let you know when that is available also you can text to this number and just put bow tutorial and I'll let you know when that is available so like I said it's not specifically crafty wood related but they do go hand in hand and um, and I'd love to show y'all some really simple ways sometimes we do include the bows in our subscription boxes and I do um, make them as simple as I possibly can but there are a few different ways that you can do them pretty simple so so that's it that's all I have for y'all um, and I will let y'all know if we do a bow tutorial. If there's any other type of tutorials that y'all want to see painting, um, wise, craft wise, let me know and I'll see what I can put together for y'all on the tutorials. Cause I'd love to keep doing these to, you know, to teach everybody. And there's so many different techniques out there, um, that are available. So let me know what else you're interested in seeing and I'll see what we can put together. So. That's it. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go finish my sign. I will post pictures when I am done with my double-sided sign and tag us, tag, tag Rustic Glitter and um, let me know what you've done with your buffalo plaid. I want to see. So um, that's it. Y'all have a great, is it Wednesday? I mean, I never know what day it is, but I think it's Wednesday. And if you watched my live yesterday, we made it through with no mishaps. That was a very crazy yesterday, <laughs> but I laughed and I hope y'all laugh, but, um, but that's it. So I'm going to sign off and finish my sign. Y'all have a great Wednesday and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.